I'm Danny Rosenthal. I'm the director of Community at Engine Hire, and I'm really lucky to be the host and the guest of today's webinar. And if anybody knows anything about me, I really love email marketing. And I do because it's one of the only ways where you are totally in control of talking and working with and connecting with your users, the people that have been like, yeah, I want to know more about what you do. Um, before I was in childcare, uh, I was in a band and uh, we did pretty well. And uh, in that band, we used a lot of email marketing. That's where I learned it. Like, that's where I started being like, oh, there's something here. Because we uh, cultivated our email list and there was a person on, on it that was on it for a year. And you know how email marketing works. You can track that stuff. You can see who's opening, who's clicking through, all of that stuff. And I could see that this person was on our email list, but they opened zero emails. They couldn't click on anything then. And they were on our email list for a year. And then one day we sent an email and all of a sudden that person opened up that one email. They went onto our website and they bought one of everything. So they bought like $600 worth of stuff uh, out of nowhere. So that was a pretty good like, you know, return on investment of just, you know, waiting them out. Um, so I would love if everybody used the chat to type in like what they want to get out of this because it's dynamic. I'm a real person. I'm looking at this stuff right now and we can just pivot to whatever the people in the room need most. Um, I'm also going to open up a poll because I found out I could do that uh, and it should be uh, make it pretty easy um, for uh, us to kind of just see like you know what do you do is like what do you want out of email marketing uh, you know what are you currently you know using for your emails and all of that stuff and what your goals are um, so from there, all right, let's just start getting down here. Okay, me time, I already did me time. Okay, how to make this great. Okay, you can use the emojis. I don't know if everybody knows, but there's like totally reactions. Uh, they're called reactions here, not emojis. Uh, at the bottom of your screen, I think it looks like a heart. And you know, if there's something you love, I guess use the heart. If there's something you wanna like woohoo, like I don't know what all they are, but I think you should really use them if you feel so inclined. And if you don't like what I'm saying, I'm sorry. I don't think there is like a crying, please stop it emoji. Uh, again, use the chat, like ask questions in real time. I might not know the answers, uh, but I would love to like know. And then I will look into it for you. Cause like I said, I'm a total nerd about this stuff. And then here's my big ask. And I don't think you'll all go for it, but I'm going to do it anyways, please. Please, please turn on your cameras. And I tell you this why, because um, I don't know if I don't see you, like if I don't even care if you're not really there, but I don't know if I'm like boring you. If I don't, if you know, if I don't see the glazed over face, I don't know if I'm doing it correctly. So, you know, that's my plea. I know you're not gonna do it, but you know, whatever. For the people that do do it, you know, reaction you know, one of these good thumbs up for you guys. Uh, okay, so, uh, okay. So, oh, and lastly on this stuff, just pre-webinar stuff, uh, if you stand on the end, I'm gonna just raffle off. I thought about it this morning. I was like, what could I do to make this even more fun? And I realized I could just like write your email sequence for you. The one that I'm talking about today, I just like write it for you. If you stay to the end, I will just we, like we'll, we'll like it'll be a collaboration, but I will uh, like I would totally just write like we could do it together. It's a team. Okay, so goal is to understand the power of connecting with your users directly through email and share an actual pre-written email sequence so you can start using it today. So this is what I'm going to share is the actual like email sequence I use um, to like turn my clients into customers so first of all before you have an email you gotta totally you gotta totally uh, start collecting emails so 
I like it. The easiest way to just start collecting emails, like the most passive way, like you don't have to be aggressive about it. You could just casually put that email address thing at the bottom of like the footer of your website. You just have it there. Like then it's on every page, super easy peasy. It's not the best way to do it, but it's there. Like at least you're doing it. Like I think the imperfect actions is like a great way to go. Um, yeah, like if, if you're not doing it, then you're just like not doing it at all. So you might as well just start here. What I would do to up that is I would be like, hey, uh, you know, join our newsletter. Like, you know, you add a little something, you know, if you do this, you're gonna get this out of it, right? So that brings me down to lead magnets, part of, again, collecting emails. So this is like a term, uh, it sounds, I'm not actually even sure if the sounds like what it totally is, but it's a great way to exchange an email for something that will derive uh, someone some benefits. So on my website for my agency, I do the best nanny boss ever guide. So I'm like, give me your email and I will give you this guide on how to be the best nanny boss ever because it talks directly to the target market of families that don't know what they're doing about, um, don't know how to take care of a nanny necessarily, right? And how to be like that greatest boss ever. And there's like things that we already know. So like I made it into a booklet. I'm like, here it is. On top of that, with the lead magnet, I said like, hey, here's some of the stuff about, I tried to make it very enticing. Um, you know what, motherhood? That's totally fine that you can't stay to the to the end. I got you. I'll keep you. I'll keep you in mind. Uh, you're still on the list. Don't worry about it. Um, so, uh, let's see. Where was I? Let's see. So yeah. So like, you try to make it really enticing. Be like, here's the five. Like within this guy, there's five things that everybody needs to know how to take care of a nanny, so you don't have to go out and talk to an agency again go get another one. Like it costs a lot of money to get an ant. Like just read the, the thing. So if they don't want to be your customer right away, which it, that's like a huge bomb. Let's think about that too. When you're asking for a lot of everyone to fill out your actual like application to work with you, they're handing over a bunch of information to someone that they might not have ever spoken with before. It's just going blindly in. So that's a big ask. This is where like email marketing is great because it's really easy. You're saying like, hey, just give me your email and I'm just gonna give you this thing that should actually be like huge benefit. Um, with that, um, yeah, so really not that crazy. So I see, you know, how to create a lead magnet. That's a great question. What I totally think the best way to start that process is to just go like, what is it that you really feel like passionate about when you talk to your target market so most likely families about uh like the industry like what questions do they ask the most and you're like oh you need to know this like here's that thing that you're always telling people and they're always like whoa i didn't know uh or you know just whatever it is that you're really passionate about in this industry i would start with that because if you're passionate about it it's probably also helpful for them lead magnets so like I said, mine was like this book. It's like 20 pages long. It's 20 pages because it's like formatted really nice. It doesn't have to be, like it wouldn't actually be 20 pages if it wasn't formatted so nice. But like, it doesn't have to be that. Really, here's some great examples of what a lead magnet for anyone in the nanny industry could use. And uh, it doesn't have to be crazy. Like one of them is your know, top 10 interview questions for nanny candidates. Like, yeah, I would give an email to just get 10 great interview questions. I've never interviewed a nanny before. What do I know about this? I've come to your website already, so I kind of already trust you. I've looked around. I've thought, I'm going to weigh the pros and cons of this. I'm going to give this person my email so I can get 10 really good questions. It, this doesn't have to be craziness uh, with what you're giving away. It, you don't have to, like, way overthink it. One page of 10 questions, you can whip up immediately and give it away like that it would seem like you're almost devaluing like your knowledge if you don't do that um also it's great and i have it in the corner here to a b test your ideas 
So my best nanny boss guy to ever was not the first thing that I came up with. I actually did do like something along the line of like 10 interview questions. It wasn't that, it wasn't that good. I just remember like doing it and like it wasn't convert. I wasn't getting emails. So I switched it out. Marilyn, should you periodically change your lead magnet? Mm -hmm. Long answer short, maybe. I would go, I would hedge towards no. I would hedge towards uh, if something's working, it's converting really great. That's the, the one you want. So uh, there are certain platforms that like let you test the different ones. So you can do that. You can test like the, uh, the little form that gets people to sign up. So like one could be like, here's all the reasons why this is important. And one could just be like, get your email, you know, send me your email and I'll give you this. Um, so once you find like what it is people like, just, I would just stick with that one forever and ever and ever. And okay, so oh yeah, here's, here's what actually mine looks like on my site. So when you jump on my site after like 10 seconds of being on the site, because I'm impatient, this pops up and you get avoid hiring mistakes. What? I'm already intrigued. Uh, get your free best nanny boss guide ever. I'm like, Part of the things in here, this is this is just surrounding email marketing, but some of this is like the yes. The yes to me is important. You know, send me my free guide. Like that's all like just like it's the button that like it doesn't have to say submit. It can also be like doing stuff for you, like encouraging people to click more. Uh, so that's that. You could actually probably get it if you went to my website. Oh, I didn't even remember that I put that there. There you go. If you really wanted to do it and you wanted to do it right now, you could totally take it, look at it. I suppose I would lean towards actually, I'll just say, I'll stop right there with saying, just look at it, right? Okay. And do you need to have a program to create a lead magnet on your page or can you do it yourself? You don't actually need a program. Uh, what you need is just a way to collect someone's email and then uh, send them something. So, you know, for you, Marilyn, I know, the use engine hire. So all you need is when somebody submits uh, their form that uh, they get an automatic email sent out. This You can do this with tons of platforms. It doesn't just have to be an engine hire. And it just sends them that. It can be super easy. You don't even have to do that. If some, let's say you're doing pen and paper stuff, you just ask on your website for someone's email, they send it to you. It goes into like a Google thing. Like you don't know, like whatever. Like. Someone emails you, you're emailing me to get my lead magnet, right? The most way back way ever. And then you get that email and you just send, put that, you, you know, put your lead magnet in and you get sent. Like it doesn't have to be, you don't have to overcomplicate it. You complicate, you know, you automate things as you need to. So there's all of that stuff is there. So, okay. So you get my lead magnet. That's awesome. Here's then uh, what that first welcome email is. And what I should say in this too, is that the welcome, this is my, there's lots of different types of sequences. And so uh, this is like an introduction sequence to like build a bomb. So here we go. Um, let me just read this to you. Hey, first name. Thank you for reaching out to agency, that would be you guys, to learn how to, one reason they should reach out to you, second reason they should reach out to you, and third reason they should reach out to you. If you're like me, by the time you're finished with Lead Magnet, you'll be ready for Problem It Solves. Getting a reason they need your help is difficult, but you're not alone. I was there too, and everyone else that grabs my Lead Magnet is right there with you. So go ahead and click the green the, the green button and get my lead magnet. Parentheses in you and me right now. I changed the colors of it last night and I forgot that I wrote green. Let's pretend it says blue. That's gonna happen a bunch of times because I often say the color of this, on parentheses. Uh, yes, I want my lead magnet, that's the button, okay. Uh, see you on the other side of the click with your new copy of lead magnet, best, name. P.S. Grab our welcome packet while you're at it and learn more about us. And then, yes, send me the welcome packet. Okay. So easy peasy. 
Here's the legit one that I actually do. So the first one is like the form. Here's my actual one. Cause why not? Let's just, let me just share it with you. Hey, thank you for reaching out to United Nanny to learn how to take control of your family's care, reduce stress, grab your well-deserved me time and get the most out of childcare without learning things the hard way or worse, missing out on fun. Uh, it's no secret that I believe well-trained nannies are the way to building a happy family. Professional nanny gives you time, uh, stress relief, and a chance to hold the reign of your children's care. But having a nanny is unlike any other childcare. You're the boss. So straight to the point, royal trumpet horns, bump it -da dum. I'm sharing with you my best nanny boss guide ever. Ever guide, sorry, dyslexic, okay. So you don't waste any time trying to get the best out of your new nanny. You just get the best. Well, I'm not handing it over. I expect and really hope you give it a look and then fingers crossed, you'll learn something and then hold my breath. Your nanny mm -hmm. gives your family their A game every day because well, you're the best nanny boss ever. So go ahead and click the big button to learn my secrets to turning your parenting skills into CEO material without working your way up from the mail room. Get my free best nanny boss guide ever. See you on the other side of this click with your new copy of the best nanny boss guide ever. Best, Danny Rosenthal, owner of United Nanny and owner of two cats. So, oh, and then PS Grepper, welcome packet while you're at it to learn more about us. So that's like it in the actual, uh, you know, form of what that is, right? So they get that. Then, <laughs> because again, I'm impatient. The next day, uh, I do a second email. It's congratulations, you've already grabbed lead magnet. Uh, you've given in the previous email, right? Uh, you are truly on your way to overcoming problem you solve. I bet you're like, wow, I really learned a few things. Wait, did you not grab a uh, lead magnet? In case you haven't learned my secrets for problem you solve, I've included another link to my lead magnet, but high five if you already begun to flex your I want to the money. lead solve skills. Yes, I want the lead magnet. So you might have already guessed it. One free guide isn't gonna get uh, going to make you the best at problem you solve. This is just a start. I know this uh, sounds scary, but it shouldn't be because I'm giving you uh, giving you more free tools to get you where you need to be. This time I'm sharing my very favorite second download. This is going to take what you learned from Lead Magnet and put it into action. So once again, push that button and grab your second download and level up. Uh, this works and is really easy for me because I don't have to segment anybody, which mm -hmm. would mean like, uh, you're putting people into categories, which depending on your software for email marketing, you know, if pe someone clicks that first email, they get put into this funnel. For someone that clicks that doesn't click it, they get this next email. And you, it can be crazy uh, all the things that you can do with the software of your choosing, but it doesn't have to be that difficult. I don't like to make it that difficult because for me, uh, it just complicates things really quickly. And I don't need that complication. And, uh, yeah, I keep I keep it simple for me. But like maybe you have like maybe you need it uh, much more complex. What Marilyn asks, what email marketing program do you use? I've used several. Uh, I the most recent one I used was MailerLite, and actually now I just do everything within Engine Hive. Uh, because like you can with the statuses and stuff like this, uh, we can always talk about that. Uh, just send an email to support, like help you out. Uh, yeah, okay, cool. So this is it uh, in, in real life, uh, IRL. Uh -huh. uh, congratulations, you've already grabbed our best nanny boss guide. Uh, so you are on your way to truly becoming the best nanny boss ever. I bet you're like, wow, I really learned a few things. Wait, did you forget to grab it? Sad face or like scared sad face. 
in case you haven't learned my secrets for being an amazing nanny boss, like I discussed in my best nanny boss guide ever, uh, I've included another link at the bottom of this email for you to download it again. But high five if you've already begun to flex your best nanny boss skills. Get my free guide now. So you might have already guessed it. One book, less than 20 pages, and isn't going to make you a superstar boss overnight. Uh, that's just the start. I know that sounds scary, but it shouldn't be because I am giving you more free tools to help you and your nanny jump to the next level of childcare as quick as you can say. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. This time I'm including my family manual, home planner, and it is way more than a planner. It's your family's policies, procedures, rules, and regulations. I promise you will be 10 times more successful with your nanny if you fill out the family manual and hand it to your nanny on their first day. Uh, why will this make us 10 times more successful? This booklet will help you share how your family operates, and that is your nanny's best tool. So once again, go ahead and click the big button. Grab your very own family manual. Don't forget to grab your copy. <coughs> Best nanny boss ever guide right below too. President of United Nanny and Big Beatles fan. So you might have already guessed by now, I try to uh, share more about myself while doing these emails because the whole purpose of this for me is to build a bond with people. So let me also just say on top of that, I write in a very, you know, certain type of style. And that might not be your style, and it doesn't have to be. This is the style that I find works best to connect with the people that I want to connect with. Um, you don't have to write things as yourself. You can always write things as your company. You can always write things very formally. Like, it, you can, it can be whatever you want. Uh, what I think it is worth pointing out, though, is kind of the formatting. So, like, keeping things, you know, quick and, like, uh, you know, they each get their own line. Uh, you know, things are very separated. It just keeps you moving down the page. It keeps things uh, just very clear. Um, you might know, just, like, from your own experience, like, sending emails of, like, if you send somebody asking for like 10 things from them, they like send you like two, if that, and like they get very confused and it's like not very good. So it's always, to me, it's like better to send 10 emails and ask for one thing in each of them than it is to send like one email asking for 10 things. Um, which I guess I will just mention here at the same time that uh, there's no time that you can be sending too many emails to me statistically uh people want to hear from you like if they're on your list like they want to hear from you uh you might be getting people that unsubscribe and <laughs> totally fine and you know you can do things to avoid that by segmenting people finding out like who are the people that are your most active and you can send those people more emails you can the people that are the least active, you can send them less emails. Uh, you can do like everything in between, but uh, you statistically, you can't send too many emails. Like the more emails you send, like the better your rate conversion rates are. I don't remember off the top of my head what it is, uh, but uh, it's worth looking up. I will look it up uh, and then you can ask me and I'll be like, I've looked it up, here it is. Um, but do what works best for you, right? So, like, don't send, like, more emails, like, that you feel comfortable sending. It's always great to, like, dip your toes into this stuff. So, like, send one email. Like, it doesn't have to be a whole sequence. It can be the first email. It can be, the first email can be something totally else. Just being like, hey, I hope this is helpful. Let me know what you think. Uh, having those, like, call to action things are great. I kind of spread that out throughout this email sequence because to me people aren't going to bond with me within one email and then start interacting with me at the level that I want them to. So I'm like warming them up through this email sequence. But depending on like how you contacted them, like if if this is a totally cold lead that's different than if someone that called you up being like, I really want to use your service. And you're like, hey, let me send you a couple of things. Like that's the phone call that's pretty far along. So like that's a 
that's way better. Um, but this is that kind of like turning someone totally cold into somebody that wants to talk to you. So I'm building that bond over all of this. I haven't given like a call to action. What I have done is given a bunch of resources that says, hey, I'm on your side. You don't even need to go with me or anything like that. Just use the resources. Like I'm happy to just help. It kind of, for me, it kind of just shows that like, I am just happy to help. Like I like do what's best for you. Uh, and when you're ready, uh, you know, you'll come back and use my services. I think people always use the services that they can afford when they need them. And like, if they need it and they can afford you, like, I think they will just go with you. Like, that's just what I've always felt in my heart because that's, I know you're not your target market all the time or probably most often, but that's how I buy things. I'm like, oh, I want this. If I can afford it, like I just buy it. Um, let me also rewind a little bit and just say, with the sending amounts of emails that um i shouldn't have rewound now i'm i've lost on that we'll get back to that here we go on the third email hey again first name you've got lead magnet check you've got second download check check now i'm giving away the whole farm the whole farm away i really am dyslexic i promise I am giving away me. It's not crazy unless you think it's crazy awesome. And I spelled crazy wrong. Uh, I'm inviting you to grab a time with me and we can discuss your problem you solve. No strings attached. Here's the deal. I want you to have problems solved. And honestly, I don't mind if you solve it with me on your own, a friend, magic lamp, or Zoltan. Pause, stamp on soapbox. So don't be shy. Let's get you where you need to be. Click the button and let's connect. And then that would go to a scheduler. And then boom, a schedule. Uh, here's that in real life. Hey, you've got the best nanny boss ever guide, check. You've got the family manual and nanny home planner, check, check. Now I'm giving away the whole farm. I am giving away me, different font sizes there. It's not crazy unless you think it's crazy awesome. I'm inviting you to grab a time with me and we can discuss your childcare needs. No strings attached. Here, uh, here is the deal. I want you to have awesome childcare. And honestly, I don't mind if you find it, uh, your amazing nanny with United Nanny Agency on your own through a friend, Magic Lamp, or Zoltar. Pause so I can get on my soapbox. I think supportive, transparent, positive, and dedicated childcare makes a world of difference to a child and you. So don't be shy. Don't hesitate. Just click the button below and get started. Yes, I want to connect. Uh, President Danny Roosevelt, President of United Nanny, and constantly practicing the opening riff of Johnny B. Good guitar back there. I really do practice it all the time. Uh, why do it the hard way? Let's skip over the I don't know and get your family the best care. And yeah, so that's that one then. Yeah, if you use engine hire for your marketing campaigns and they unsubscribe because they say they don't want to receive uh, marketing emails, would that prevent them from receiving their booking confirmations and important emails that they will need? No, that's a great question. No, they don't. It uh, unsubscribes them from the mass, the email blaster if you're using engine hire. You don't have to worry about if it will unsubscribe them from other important emails that you actually want them to always get. And uh, within that too, you can always send them like a personal email too, you know, like in the admin side and there's like emails at the bottom of that. You can always send them an email there too, even if they unsubscribe. And you can always resubscribe them. I wouldn't do that if they unsubscribe, but like if somebody mistakenly did that or they're like, hey, I'm not getting your emails. I saw that you had a coupon for something and what happened there? And you'd be like, oh, you unsubscribe, I can resubscribe you. Uh, and then here's the last email in the email sequence. And if you read any of the emails I already sent, um, like about to actually coming to this, this is my favorite email of this whole thing. And if you do nothing, I would totally just use this exact email. It has the highest open rate of any email in my campaign, except for the first one, because they, they wanted their best nanny boss guide ever. Then you see people like, you know, intermittently, like at any point they could trail off and call me or whatever, or they just don't want it. Uh, but this email gets everybody 
uh, to write me an email back. Like the conversion rate is, it's crazy. Uh, I tried to look at it, but I, I, didn't, I didn't follow through with actually looking at the conversion rate uh, properly. Again, I will look at it. If you want to really know, you know, email me, uh, Danny at enginehire.ca, and I will look it up and I'll send it to you. Uh, actually, once this is all recorded and everything and uh, on a website, I will try to share these stats there as well. Um, so here it is. Hey, first name, I'm checking in. How's the problem you solved going? Best name. What's great about this is it doesn't, it's, it seems real. Like it did, it seems like it, I actually just wrote it to you. Hey, just want to check in. How's the nanny search going? Best Danny Rosenthal, President United Nanny. What's great about all these emails is you can send them, you know, you decide at what point you want to send them. So if you want to send your email day one, you send your second email day two, or you want to send email two a week later, also good. Do what works best for like what you feel works best for your target market and adjust it from there. Um, but this one I send a month after the first email I sent. So like the whole sequence is done. People have lost touch. They've, they've ghosted me. I've cried about it. And then I send this email and then they write me back. And it's great because they write me back and they either say, hey, it's, I've had a tremendous time. I hired someone, it's going amazingly. Or they say, Danny, I'm totally at a loss. I don't know what to do. Can we please connect about this? Uh, or they say something maybe in the middle. Um, yeah, so that's my third email, my favorite one, I sent it a month after, and it gets everybody to reach back out to me. And part of that is because it just looks like I actually shot them an email, which is to me the magic of that. Um, I think if you were to send these other emails as like very pretty emails, which I think is always awesome, uh, I think sending this one has to like be like no letterhead, like it has to look like you actually just shot it off. And you know, people aren't daft. Like they, they know that this is probably automated. And if they don't, like get like. I suppose the caveat to doing this email is you can really only send it if you are willing to write that person an email back. If you are not doing that, then don't send this email. Uh, but I think a lot of us would or have like the capabilities for someone to answer them. So I think that this is like a really great email. Like if you're doing like, if you're the type of person that's on uh, like social media and you're like DM people, like you've totally handled this, you know? Uh, so like I would do, if you're gonna do nothing, I would do email one and email this one uh, from the entire sequence. And the, the first one, like I said, it doesn't have to seem anything like this. Just make sure like you do something that helps to build a bond with someone and gets them to learn a little bit more about you or trust you a little bit more. That's why I give away a guide. Like you don't have to do that. We don't, we don't have to overcomplicate this stuff. You can just totally uh, make this, you know, as easy for you as you want it to be. Um, so let's see what we got else here. Okay, here's the the last things about this officially is here's some action steps. Uh, action steps, create a lead magnet, find your voice, modify your welcome sequence, and then use your welcome sequence. That's actually like a ton of things in like four sentences. But like I said, you scratch create a lead magnet if that's not for you at all. I think it, I think you can handle it. Like I said, it could be 10 questions, it could be five questions. It could be like, here's the number one question you should ask. Like you really could send that. Whatever you think people need and they will click for, that's what you should give them. Only give them things that will actually help them. So sending them something that's not going to help your target market is it's not going to help you at all. So don't even do anything that's not going to talk to them specifically. Find your voice. Like I said, I talk in a very particular way. You probably already have like a style guide or a way that you're already right. You don't have to think about it. Uh, if there's a fun stylistic voice that you like using, then you know, lean into learning how to do that better. You probably could use AI to like enhance all of your writing. You could actually use AI to write. You could actually probably just write, hey, write me four emails for a great opening. 
introduction sequence. See where that gets you. I don't know. Uh, I really just encourage you to try stuff. Um, and then modify your welcome sequence. That's, you know, I'm just saying like, you know, make sure it's what you want it to be, talking to who you want to be talking to, all that stuff. And then, you know, use it. Uh, and then uh, right over here, I have email marketing systems that you could use. Uh, address. Um, these are, I've like I said, I've used MailerLite, uh, MailChimp I've used. I didn't like it, but you know, you might. Uh, Keep is one that is, uh, can do a lot of things. Uh, Constant Contact. These are just like a few. Like there's so many out there. There's probably even more than we think right now of like the ones that you're using. There's probably like a thousand more. Uh, like they're all out there. I put an engine art because like that's what I legit use now. Like I don't feel the need to use anything else. Like I said, I like to keep it simple. So engine hire definitely has its limitations of like what it can do. It can do a lot. It can, you know, do like open rates and who sent this and unsubscribes. And it can do all the things you need it to. If you wanted to like get it more advanced from there, there's definitely things you could do to like trick it out. Um, like off menu stuff. I like to think of that stuff sometimes of like using tags to like who's gonna get certain things. Um, but like that, you might need something like much more comprehensive. You might have like a lot of like uh, gears, you know, moving in your business. Okay, and then so I have downloaded this. You guys can't click that, but I can. So I'm gonna throw in the chat uh, to everyone. This is the link to this actual, my, my Canva thing that I used just, that I'm sharing right now. Like this is it. Um, so with that, does anybody have any questions? We kind of went through a lot. Get it. I have a question. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Okay, so I put it in chat, but I'll go ahead and say it. So okay. when you get a submission form in from Engine Hire, somebody comes in and just says, yeah, I want more information or whatever. Do you then put that information into a client application, like a potential client application, so you can start up your email sequence? Or what do you do with that? And uh, Or do you just start emailing them yourself? How do you do that with automation? Yeah, totally. Yeah, I just put them, uh, I make whatever status it is, like I make an email. Once they hit submit, they become a client and they're like in, you know, a status, uh, you know, whatever that is, like officially write their client, no matter if they're a client or not, right? They're a lead. Um, and then like the email sequence just starts. I, I I'll point this out. The, every like other email software is not engine hire where it's like actually your like CRM and that's just you know all those other ones they're just email marketing so they usually just have like a name and a phone like maybe like and all the general information like contact information is like what they collect nothing else right your dashboards in engine hire and I know that I don't want this to turn into an engine hire thing but like your dashboards collect everything they're actually your clients so I know some people actually are afraid to use Engine Hire as more of like a, a email marketing system uh, because like it's so like comprehensive. But like in Engine Hire, you have unlimited data, like you have unlimited like space. So I think it's always best like to just like now you have them like in your system. They're actually already in your CRM, and you can just keep you know, adding, you know, uh, statuses and things like as you need to like fill out like the statuses that go with like your actual like service. Uh, you know, you can use secondary status and stuff like that too. But I don't think uh, having more, like to me, the whole point of email marketing is to get someone to buy your product. So once they're in your engine hire system, like there are, it's already further along. You don't have to like import anything or confuse anything. Like they're already there. And you can work with them in any way. Like you're never asking anybody to sign up for anything else ever again. Like if they're in, like they're in, they get like a dash. Like I don't know. I think it's just helpful. I know it doesn't seem like all the other things. It seems like too much possibilities, but I think that uh, it's exactly what you actually, at the end of the day, are looking for. 
Well, that's how I feel. I feel like the more I can get packed into one thing, it's a lot less work for me to have to jury rig programs to work with other programs. And, you know, I used to have to use Zapier to do this and, you know, constant contact to do that and, and all that. So I, I kind of like having it all in one place. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I just opened up another poll. Uh, just kind of, you know, get us, you know, we started where we started and now we're on the other side of it. And uh, we can see if this was helpful or not. Um, you know, this says in engine hire, are there fun templates to use with photos, graphics, etc.? I have had putting together an email marketing campaign on my list of things to do for a while, but yet to explore. There are uh, things inside engine hire that you can do. Uh, I will uh, on the uh, Hedging if I should do okay, we'll just do it right now all together. Uh, I'm gonna just drop you a an article on the making a fancy design email design design email beautiful email template. See, I got it there so fast, it didn't waste anybody's time. Okay, I just sent you a link on that so you can learn more about that type of thing. Hey, Danny. Uh okay. I'm driving, so um, awesome. probably not the safest thing ever, but um, I have had an agency for 12 years and all my email is just business related. Mm -hmm. Like you need a nanny, here's the things, you know, like what they need. It's not been a warm fuzzy. I'm, like someone else said, I've never done an email marketing campaign. So like, how do you send an email out to existing clients of like, oh, hey, now we're doing this. You know what I mean? Now we're. Now we're doing email marketing, you know, totally. does that make sense? Yes, totally. So actually there's a, a thing that like in the email marketing biz, they call a resurrection sequence. Uh, and that's exactly for that kind of situation where it's like, hey, it's been a long time. Maybe you've, maybe you've had these people in your list forever, but like you've never actually ever like did email marketing. Like you've just had email lists. And it's kind of the type of thing where you like introduce yourself. And so that kind of works uh, where you say, you send out an email and being like, hey, like, and you just kind of reintroduce yourself of being like, hey, um, you, you know, you might not remember why you signed up for this email list. You know, you could be like, I, I know that you've been a client for a long time, but I also have a lot of people here. And like, you can just like make sure that people actually still want to be on your list now that you're going to like use it in this way, because m more than likely in like that kind of case, like they didn't know they were going to sign up for getting like email marketing. Right. Uh, but email marketing also doesn't have to seem like so crazy of like marketing. It could just be like casual, like just making sure the bond is there. Um, I think that that's like the overall premise. Uh, it's just like continually building a bond with uh, with your clients of like what is uh, actually beneficial for them. Um, does that kind of make sense? I know you're driving, so I don't want to. Yeah, I pulled over. <laughs> um, so basically, I should look up a resurrection template of like what kind of just to give me an idea like with AI or whatever to say because like you're saying a lot of them are my clients that I have in the past or do interact with regularly and then there's probably a bunch of them that like you know you know how it is when people are like the house is burning down they go sign up for a bunch of agencies they forgot about it you know um kind of thing so there's going to be a mix. There's going to be my babysitting clients I talk to every week. And then there's going to be someone I found a nanny four or five years ago. And then there's going to be somebody that signed up and never used us. So it's such a mixed bag, you know? Yeah, totally. I, you could totally just like it kind of, I feel like it kind of seems like you're putting yourself out there, you know? So like it kind of can be like a little vulnerable, but you really should just like send an email. that's just like, Hey, you know, I just wanted to reach out. You signed up for this a while ago, or like you gave me your email because of like, hey, you wanted to learn more about this, or you're, you know, wanted to work with me, or you are a client. Like, there's definitely ways you can figure out like who are your clients, who are the people that like never worked with you, right? And like, 
uh, you can like segment and send a different email to each people and then get them signed up in the way that like you want to move with them further. So you can have it like, like, uh, you know, let's say you make two different emails, one for people that have never used your service, one for people that currently use your okay. service. And then, so like if I went through and did that, then you would send them different, like, hey, it's nanny recognition day. Maybe here's some ideas for your nanny versus like, if you've never used this before, how come? Well, what can we do? You know, kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. And I think you actually like just walked into one that's like very great, uh, which is like nanny recognition week. That's like a freebie for everybody here to like, you don't have to have like, really done anything ever to like sneak back into like just sending people emails of like it's totally a freebie to like no one's gonna people i don't know like they will just want that information it's totally like you're not selling anything it's any recognition week. you're just saying like hey like i had a question about the opt-ins yeah um do you help with those i have a couple but i have tried them but i think that people know that you kind of get them to try to sell. Do you have recommendations for that or should I just set up an appointment? Uh, I suppose, what are you doing right now? It's not digging too deep, what's not working? So, so I had an opt-in like for a free checklist yeah. and um, I got a couple of signups, but then like I did a story and then um, asked a question. They were like, oh yeah, 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 I'll sign up, but they didn't sign up. So I'm like, how do I get them to sign up without you know being so salesy yeah i guess there's kind of i guess it's kind of like philosophical but i always feel like if you genuinely feel like you're helping someone it's not salesy and i mm -hmm. always tell myself that like if i'm doing something like it's because like i feel very passionately that somebody needs it and like that's why i did the best nanny boss guide ever because i was like this is all the information that like, i tell people all the time like like casually, like when I'm out on the street and people are like, what do you do? And you're like, nanny stuff. And people are like, whoa, crazy. I have a child. And you're like, oh, you should know these things when you're looking into a nanny. But like, I've been looking into all of those things. Um, yeah, I mean, we could talk about it for sure. I don't think there's anything too secret uh, about the stuff. I think what, I guess there's one thing that it comes to mind, which is like, you actually don't have to give away content that's your own. Uh, one of like a good like an email that I don't have in this sequence that uh, I would maybe have in this sequence is like maybe email two or three would be like here's my favorite things to learn more about this stuff and it would be like uh you know I would be like the nanny agency school is great to learn more about like agency owners and like like I would just like send out be like here's a great podcast about you know having you know whatever it is you're selling he, like and it's not yours it could be like totally somebody else's right like just like give them like other things that are not uh you know like it just builds a bond like where it's just like hey i'm actually not selling you stuff i'm sharing things that have helped me about this topic so like if you um i'm trying to think of like something crazy like if you were uh, i have got no idea my mind is blank on what a crazy career could be um like if you were a clown, right? And you're selling you like clown services, right? And people could hire you to be a clown. And so like one of your emails in that sequence could be like, hey, if you don't want, you know, hire me to be your clown for your kid's birthday party, here's like my favorite place to get party stuff. Here's like a website where I learned to do like balloon animals. Here's this other thing that also I feel like is really important. And here's my favorite place to buy cakes. Uh, and like, and like that's basically your email and be like i hope that helps uh you know you write it in your own voice but like you're it's like very like not sales even and people just like then are like oh my gosh that was really helpful and then they build a bond with you in this way where like you feel like you're watching the same tv shows and that also is like huge if you ever talk to somebody and they watch the t same tv shows you like that's like a great way to bond with someone at a party is being like you know, you either ask them, like, what do you do for a living? Or you're like, hey, are you watching anything cool? And they're like, oh my gosh, we're still watching that. And like, you don't even know them, but like, it's an instant connection. So I think building, doing one of those things is like a, another like tricky way to like get people to just build that bond and like not feel like you're selling them anything. 
Uh, and then, you know, you can sell them stuff later when they're like, wait, I actually, I built this giant bond with you. I just trust you the most. I don't want to look anywhere else. I'm just going to go to Stephanie. Helpful. Okay. So thanks everybody and have a great rest of your day and enjoy the weekend.